What's your favourite number? It's time for maths with Mr Thomas. Here we go, chapter two, lesson number five. We're moving on now to look at dividing fractions. Yeah! Good news for you, Charlotte. If you divide fractions, it's the exact same as multiplying fractions, but with one extra step thrown in. Really? Yes. So, to divide fractions, the first thing that you do if you're dividing two fractions is you take the fraction on the right and you turn it bloop, upside down. So, if you add one half, that become two over one. If you have five over four, that become four over five. If you have two over 17, that becomes 17 over two. So just turn the fraction upside down. Once you do that, all you do is you change the divide sign to a multiply sign and work through it just the way we did in the last lesson. So, first example, if we have one eighth divided by three sevenths. First thing, Charlotte, where are you listening? What do you do first of all? Good, you turn the fraction on the right upside down. So we keep one eighth as it is, that would stay as one eighth, but the three over seventh would become seven over three. And when we do that, note the divide becomes multiply. And we're just straight back to what we were doing in the previous lesson, we're multiplying fractions. To multiply fractions together, what's the first thing that you always look to see if you can do? Simplify! Brilliant, look to see if you can simplify. If you can do that first, it makes the question easier. After that, what do you do? Multiply the numerators. Good, and multiply the denominators. Brilliant, so just multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. So with this question here, we've got one times seven, which is seven, and eight times three, which is 24. And that there, is our answer. High five. Example two, we have two fifths divided by one tenth. So the first thing we want to do because we are dividing the fractions, Zach, help us out. Good, you turn the fraction on the right upside down as it says there. So two fifths will stay as two fifths and we want to change the one tenth to 10 over one, brilliant. And Zach, when you do that, what happens to the divide sign? It goes to multiply, brilliant, well done. We are now back to multiplying fractions. So once again, simplify if possible. Two fifths doesn't simplify, you can't divide them by the same thing. 10 over one, again, that doesn't simplify. Well, suppose you could rewrite it as 10, but we want to multiply a fraction by a fraction. So we're keeping it as 10 over one. Diagonally across, you've got two and one, can't simplify them, but here we've got a 10 and five. They both divide by five. So we can divide that number in the bottom and the number in the top by the same thing. So five divided by five is one and 10 divided by five will give us two. If we rewrite that then to make that a bit easier to see, we've got two over one multiplied by two over one. From there, you multiply the numerators together, so two times two, and then the denominators, one times one, giving you then four over one. And we know the answer wouldn't just be left as four over one because, Morgan, what is four divided by one the same as? Four. Brilliant, so that would just become four, and that there would be your answer. Example three. Five eighths divided by three. Wait a minute. What's up? We don't have a fraction. Good. You'll notice here we've got five eighths divided by a whole number. We can divide fractions, but this here, if we leave it as three, may be a bit trickier. So the first thing to do is to think about three as a fraction. And to do that, we draw a line underneath it and think three divided by what is the same as three. Good. Have a think about it. It would be one. Good. Because three divided by one is the same as three. And that way, we've then got the five eighths divided by three over one. So we've got a fraction divided by a fraction. So I'm just rewriting it here again to make it clear. From there, because we're dividing a fraction by a fraction, what do we then do? Brilliant. We turn the fraction on the right upside down. So five eighths stays as five eighths, but the three over one goes to one over three. We've just swapped the top for the bottom. And when we did that, the divide became a multiply, brilliant. Once again, we're multiplying fractions, so simplify if possible, five eighths doesn't simplify, a third doesn't simplify, five and three don't divide by the same thing, and one and eight don't divide by the same thing. So we can't simplify there, so all we do is multiply the numerators together, and then multiply the denominators together. Meaning then, five times one is five, eight times three is 24, so five 24ths 
will be our answer. Woo! Example four, three and one sixth divided by one and three quarters. What's the first thing that you notice about this example? We have mixed numbers. You do indeed. And if you've got mixed numbers, what's best to do first? Rewrite them. Good, rewrite them as? Improper fractions. Good. So we've got three times six, which is 18. Add on the one, which is 19. So we've got 19 over six. And we're dividing that. We're not changing the divide. All we're doing is rewriting these as improper fractions. So one times four is four. Add on three will give us seven. So we've got seven quarters. So we've rewritten both the mixed numbers as improper fractions. We can now think, oh, we've got our fraction and we're dividing it by fraction. No mixed numbers anymore, it's just improper fractions, so we can go straight into that. And to divide fractions, what's the first thing that you would do? Brilliant, you turn this fraction on the right upside down. So, the fraction on the left will stay as 19 over 6. Fraction on the right will go to 4 sevenths. And when you do that, what do you have to do? Good, you change the divide to a multiply. Bam, bam, bam. After that, to multiply fractions, simplify if possible. So, 19 sixths. Can that simplify? No! Four sevenths, can that simplify? No! If you have a 19 on the top and a seven on the bottom, can they both divide by the same thing? No! If you have a four on the top and a six on the bottom, can they both divide by the same thing? Yes! What? Two! Good, so six divided by two will give you three. Four divided by two will give you two. Once again, I'm gonna rewrite that to make it a bit clearer, so that's gonna be 19 over three multiplied by the two sevenths. From there we have it simplified as far as we can, so now what we do is just multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. So 19 times 2 and 3 times 7, meaning we would have 38 over 21. Once again, because we are left with an improper fraction, we want to rewrite that as a mixed number. So, think 38 divided by 21. How many 21s in 38? That is just one. Yes, well done. And what would the remainder be? Good, you would have a remainder of 17. And because we're working with 21ths, because the number in the bottom is 21, we leave it as 21. So it'll be 1 and 17 over 21. And that there is our answer. Example five, Ben and his dog Ollie ran around Baxter Park. Where's your bear, Ollie? They completed three and a half laps in nine and a third minutes. How long on average did each lap take? Bum, bum, bum. So we know the total time was nine and one third minutes. And we know in that time they ran the three and a half laps. So that nine and a third minutes was split between or split across those three and a half laps. So to work out how long each lap took, what we do is we take the nine and a third minutes and we want to divide that by the three and a half. So we'll get nine and a third divided by three and a half. Once again, we are dividing fractions, but you'll notice they are both mixed numbers. And when you've got mixed numbers, you want to rewrite them as improper fractions. Good. So nine times three is 27. Add on one is 28. So nine and a third is the same as 28 thirds. We're keeping that as a divide because we're not doing anything with that just now. We're just rewriting these in improper fractions. Three times two is six, add on one is seven, so that is the same as seven halves, so seven over two. Because we are dividing a fraction by a fraction, what is it that you do? Grace, help us out. Good, you take the fraction on the right and you turn it upside down. So fraction on the left, 28 over three stays as 28 over three. The fraction on the right, instead of seven over two, you flip that, and you get two over seven. But when you do that, just make sure you change the divide to a times good. Once you've done that, you are just multiplying fractions. So we now want to look at it and think, mm, can we simplify? So 28 over three, can you divide them both by the same number? No. The two sevenths, can you divide them by the same number? No. With the two thirds, could you divide them by the same thing? No. And with the 28 over 7, could you divide them by the same thing? Well, yes, you can. They both divide by 7. Good. Well spotted. So if you do 28 divided by 7, that would be 4. And if you do 7 divided by 7, that would be 1. Rewriting that to make it a bit clearer, well, that is just 4 over 3 that we've now got. And we're multiplying it by the 2 over 1. 
From there, because we have simplified, all we do next is multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. So we do four times two, which is eight, and in the bottom we'd have three times one, which is three. So we have eight thirds. Because we have an improper fraction, we rewrite it as a mixed number. So think eight divided by three. How many threes are in eight? Two, good. And you've got a remainder of two. And because we're working with thirds, we keep it as thirds. So each lap would take two and two thirds minutes. And that there would be your answer. Woo! Well done. Try some of the questions in the TJ Left Left book, page 138 to 139, exercise five. Once again, there's lots of questions online or in other textbooks for dividing fractions. Just practice them somewhere and check your answers. Best of luck. Any problems, give me a shout. Hello. See you later. Bye.